heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear and let us hear. I feel the rain.
The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. As I was preparing to release the word today, come on, lift your hands. This is an activated atmosphere. The Lord took me to Amos, the sixth chapter. Hallelujah. And he said, Zion, Zion, why are you so complacent? Zion, why are you so complacent? He said, see what I did for the others, I will do it for you. Hey, this is not the time to get complacent. Hallelujah. This is the time to believe in God for the impossible. Come on, lift your hands. He says, I'm going to enlarge you. I'm going to expand you. I am going to multiply you. I am going to double you, says the Lord. Zion. Zion, I love you. Zion, I desire to prosper you. Zion, I desire seek ye under. Oh, I feel that high seek. Lift your hands. I seek ye under. I seek it by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I speak a fresh wind. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. There it is. Now, I need you to find two or three. I need you to find two or three people. And I need you to hold their hands. Come on, come on. We're being prophetic on this morning. Oh, I hear that. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Coming, it's coming, it's coming. Hey, it's coming, it's coming. Breakthrough, it's coming. Enlargement, it's coming. Hey, it's more, yeah, it's coming. Hey, more, it's coming. Turn around, it's coming, more, it's coming, hey, it's coming, come on, get that, it's coming, come on, it's coming, come on, work that thing out, work it out, hey, it's coming, new platform, new breakthrough, hey, it's coming, by the power and authority of God, the person's hand that you're holding, I decree and declare more, 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 more. Come on, release those hands. Hey, come on. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's more, it's coming. Hey, more. spoken so we believe it's on the way somebody say it's on the way 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 when I pray Rejoice about it. 
the delivering angel is on his way to you with it. You have to believe it and receive it. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Stand an attitude of atmosphere of worship. And you may be seated at this time and prepare your hearts and minds for this morning's epicenter announcements. Hallelujah. Welcome to Epic Center at Lakeover, where it all begins again. We are so excited you decided to join us today. If this is your first time worshiping with us, text the word visitor to 601-202-4365. This way, we can officially welcome you to our community here at the Epic Center. Connect to one of our services. Sunday morning's inspirational worship at 11 a.m. Sunday night's power and praise, our more traditional Pentecostal services at 7 p.m. Faith in the Word Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Monday Glory Night's prayer encounters, a prophetic flow through prayers, decrees, focus assignments at 6 p.m. Again, we are excited that you chose us as your place of worship today. Have an epic center experience. Amen, amen. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, epicenter. Praise the Lord and welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Minister K with our uh, special announcements. Can someone say Friday night? Friday night, hallelujah. Uh, Friday night, the Youth and Young Adults Department will be hosting Hallelujah Night. This coming Friday, hallelujah. October 28th at 7 o'clock p.m. All right, and next Monday, hallelujah, they will be hosting our annual fall festival October 31st at 6 o'clock p.m. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. And, and um, anyone who wants to volunteer uh, with your trunks and everything, see Minister Rash, amen, or any of the uh, department heads. And we are about to step over into our November to remember. Yes, I am excited about the things that are coming up in November. November 11th through the 13th, we will be celebrating our sis. 16th pastoral anniversary for our Apostle Lionel J. Trailer. Yes, let's give it up. Amen. And we want to be a blessing to our pastor and our leaders. So we're asking that all leaders sow in, I mean, join in and sowing a love offering to our pastor for $150. All members can show a love, sow a love offering of $125, and we all can join in in sowing a love offering to our beautiful First Lady trailer, yes, for a $100. Amen. Amen. So we can start now by sowing a little here, a little there. Start by um, writing pastoral anniversaries on your envelopes or seeing any of our um, office administrators. And let's not forget, during our celebration, November 12th will be our Shepherd's Ball. Hallelujah! I am excited. And you guys, tickets are only $55 for this formal event. Only $55. You can grab a ticket, come into the bookstore, see one of us in the bookstore, and purchase your ticket. Amen. Uh, any volunteers that are interested in helping out with this event, please see Lady Trailer. And also, if you want to stay informed with all the amazing things that are going on here at the Epic Center, please pull out your phones and text EPIC to 601-202-4365. That's EPIC to 601-202-4365. Four, three, six, five. Amen. That concludes our special announcement. Amen. Are you guys excited about the things that are going on at the epicenter? I'm excited. Well, I'm up here to just talk to you about the Shepherd's Ball. The tickets are in the bookstore. They are $55. Now, this is not a banquet. This is a formal ball 
event. So we want you to dress up, and you're not required to wear purple and champagne. We know some people like to coordinate and things like that. But we don't want you to say, well, I couldn't come because I couldn't find anything purple. You can wear orange. You can wear pink. You can wear white. You can wear black. You can wear red. Just come and rejoice with us as we celebrate our man of God. Amen? All right? Now, I'm going to be in either purple or champagne, whatever one fit. Okay, so I don't want you to say, oh, they didn't even tell me about the colors. So we're telling you about the colors. It's purple and champagne. Amen. But we want to do this thing big, and we are doing it big. Okay. Okay, $55 is not a lot. Okay. I'm telling you the truth because the event, this is not even covering the cost of us to do this thing. We have a guest band coming all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, yes. And so they're going to be singing all Fred Hammond songs, and they're going to be doing everything. You know, Fred Hammond is uh, Bishop's favorite artist, amen, Apostle's favorite artist. So we're going to do that. We want everyone who is on that planning committee to see me after service. Also, say life group. Find your life group every Tuesday. This Tuesday is men's ministry. We want the men to come out and be with Elder Hampton, amen, for 7 p.m., we're growing again in our life groups, and I'm telling you, it's going to be great. Also, I need to see everyone that Spears had a department. This is something we need to see you for the Shepherd's Ball that we're doing. Every department head, your security, parking lot, uh, hostess, or whatever, we need to see you right here over me and Elder Hampton. Need to see you uh, after service. Amen? How many people getting their tickets? These tickets are going limited seating so purchase your ticket go into the bookstore also if you want to do your pastor's love offering the lord has challenged me not to do the 150 i am doing 600 dollars for my man of god amen he covers my ministry he's there and some people may say well i don't know why they got to give to a man of god it's scriptural okay god uses a man or a woman in the earth realm and how many people believe you should honor those who cover you come on let's stand and give our man of god 150. Amen. I tell you, I tell you no lie, to have a man of God committed. I know this man of God. I live with this man of God. So I'm challenging myself. I give too. Amen. And so I'm going above and beyond this year. And so I want all leaders to give 150. Go to the bookstore. We have Pastor Love Offerings uh, envelopes there. All members 125. Amen. Amen. How many people are excited? Oh, one more thing. Food trucks will be available for the fall festival. We have so many games and things that are gonna take place. So we're gonna have an $18 band for all you can eat catfish, all you can eat everything. Okay, so $18, don't double, double dip. $18, okay, in the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are we excited about what God is doing at the Epson? Are we excited about this upcoming ball and anniversary? It's a time of rejoicing and a celebration and appreciation. Amen. So let us get ready for that. But before we receive the offering, we just want to acknowledge the presence this morning of Mr. David F. Lindsay. And he's here. He's going to be running for Hines County Circuit Judge, District 7. And so we acknowledge you and glad to have you with us in the service this morning. Amen. Well, with that in mind, it's seed sowing time in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time to give, and we're excited because the word declares that God loves a, the Amplified Version says, God loves a cheerful, hilarious, prompt to do a giver whose heart is in his giving. If you would like an offering envelope, just raise your hands, and one of our PMTs will gladly serve you. Also, you can find one on the seat pocket located in front of you. And don't forget, if you're writing a check, make it payable to the Epicenter Church, and that's spelled E-P-I-C-E-N-T-E-R. Hallelujah. And again, we want to welcome our online viewers. Thank you for joining in with us this morning. We're excited to have you with us. You'll notice on the screen the different ways you can give. If you want to send or mail your tithes in, you can do so at 1485 Livingston Lane, Jackson, Mississippi, 39213. Also, we have two ways you can give electronically. First, you can give by way of text, by texting the words I tithe or I give in all caps to the number 601-202-4365. Also, you can give via the cash app by typing in dollar sign, the Epicenter Church. And again, that's spelled E-P-I-C-E-N-T-E-R. And as you are giving your tithes and offers together, I want to read you a scripture. Very familiar one found in Genesis chapter 8. We all know it, verse 22. And there it says, while the earth remaineth, 
seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So he says there's seed time, and then there's a harvest. He just didn't say seed time. He said seed time and harvest time. So if you sow a seed, he says you will get a harvest. And the thought he put in my mind this morning is that your seed not only blesses you and sends a harvest back your way, but your seed preserves you until the next harvest comes. For an example, in this time of year, we think it's winter. We think the grass stops growing. But did you know that this time of year, you still seed your grass? You give it one final seeding because what does that seed do? It preserves it until the time of spring when it's time to bloom again. So see, when you sow your seed, it's getting you in line for the next harvest, and it preserves you until the next harvest comes. And so a person who sows his seed, God will not let you go without. He will keep you and preserve you. And so as we know, as we sow our seed this morning, know that you're not at a loss. Your seed sets you up for preservation, and it sets you up for increase for the next harvest. Amen. So sow your seed with joy this morning as we give. If you compete to get your tithes and offers together, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stand. Stand right where you are. Those that can and will turn to your right. Make your way to the end of the aisle at the directions of our PMTs. Make your way down and sow your seed into God's kingdom. Online viewers, go ahead and press that send button and sow your seed as well. Heavenly Father, we just thank you now that you've given us one more chance and opportunity to sow seed into your kingdom. And right now we sow our seed into your kingdom, into the good fertile ground of the epicenter with confidence, believing you, Father, for an abundant harvest and a good, good return. And also we believe you for preservation, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we command the angels to go forth now and cause that harvest to come our way in Jesus' name. Now go ahead and point your seed and say, my seed is unstoppable. My seed is unstoppable. My seed will work for me. It's a servant for me. It shall preserve me and it shall return to me, increase and multiply in Jesus' name. If you believe it, send it up with a praise. Hallelujah. As I turn you back over now to our EMD. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord on this morning for he is good. He is great and mighty. He is able to bring you through whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you have yes. been carrying around on this morning. I want to let you know that you will never be defeated. Say to yourself, I will never be defeated. Because because God is the greatest power, we will never be defeated. Any obstacles that try to come into your pathway, say to it, I will never be defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never be the thing, never be the thing. And because God, He's the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. And because God, the greatest power we shall never never be defeated say because God he's the greatest power we shall never never be defeated and because God he's the greatest power
you say hey. it with me? Never be deceived. Let's say it. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. God is exalted. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. 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 Amen. To present the angel of this house. Amen. Our very own Apostle Lionel J. Trailer. Put your hands together. As Hallelujah. You find you about two or three people. Tell them I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord. Come on. Find you about two or three people. Tell them I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord. Now tell them, neighbor, I came to have church. And if you didn't come to have church, don't you sit next to me in church ever again. Come on. Put your hands together. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't, Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. Can't nobody, Can't nobody do, me like do me like Jesus. Oh, He's my friend. Let's say it again. I said, Can't nobody do me. Do me like Jesus. Oh, okay. Can't nobody, nobody do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. Can't nobody. Can't do me like Jesus. Like oh, he's, he's my friend. Hey, well, he picked me up and he turned me. Turn me around. Pick me up and me up. Turn me around. Turn me around. Pick me up and me up. Turn me around. Turn me around. Oh, he's my friend. Then he healed my body. He told me. He told me to run. Your hands on the Sunday morning. 
like you at the epicenter. I said it can't nobody do me. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Do me like the love. Do me like the Lord. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. Oh, he my Let's go, weeks. I said can't nobody Woo! do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I said can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I said can't nobody do me like Jesus.
to God with the voice of triumph. Shout! 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 To God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel him in the Holy Ghost. Shout! Shout if you got the education. Shout if you don't have the education. Shout if you're a business owner. Shout if you lost your job this morning. Shout! wondering what's going on. What kind of church is this? Hand clapping, foot stomping, tongue talking. Over here in Lake Grove acting like that. in that church we found out a secret shout about it now we gonna testify later shout about it now we gonna testify later shout about it now we gonna testify later shout about it now shout about it now shout about it now and you gonna testify later shout about it now you gonna testify later shout about it now you gonna testify later shout about it now go ahead shout about it now Leave me. He said he won't leave. 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 He said he won't leave
wonderful. It was never about whether or not you get prosperity. That's wonderful. Oh, but it's about his blood has made me whole. You get the spouse and the house, that's wonderful. But if I never get the spouse and the house, thank God I'm in the house. Whoosh, I, uh, y'all, is Jesus Oh is Jesus Is Jesus in my soul that trailer I don't know if you Baptist I don't know if you cogent I don't know if you I don't know what you is I'm saved Woo! blood wash blood bought filled with the Holy Ghost and that with a burning a burning fire that fire and I won't let that fire go out Used to, he once asked, I believe it was John Wesley, the founder of the Wesley Church and the Wesley, the Methodist movement, they once asked him, how do you get the people to come to tent revivals and get so many people to come to revival? He says, I will set myself on fire and it'll just come and watch me burn. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I can't expect you to be on fire and I ain't on fire. And I'm going to tell you the truth about my fire. It don't just work when I get up. My fire was burning when the praise team was singing. In fact, my, my fire was burning when, when Minister Goods was in prayer. In fact, I was on fire when I pulled up in the parking lot. In fact, when I woke up this morning, I had him on my mind. Shire! Sing a song. 
on, they say, when you see me coming, got him on my mind. When you see me coming, y'all ain't saying nothing. Got him on my mind. Got Jesus. <laughs> yes, sir. Some of y'all got everything on your mind but Jesus. Uh-huh. Glory be to God. You can't have Jesus on your minds and your hand don't get the move. Oh, you can't have Jesus on your mind in a sanctuary and the thank you, Lord, not come out of your mouth. You can't have Jesus on your mind because the Bible says what man could take fire in his bosom can you say it? Say it! Say it! Americans got a rain dance. The native. 
Native Africans got a rain day. How you in the kingdom ain't got a rain day? It's getting ready to happen. It's tick 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 ready. We're enlarging our territory. Expansion is on the way. It's getting ready, getting ready. It's getting ready, getting ready. Get 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 ready. It's getting ready to happen. Give him a praise. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. He never be defeated. He never be defeated. Will never be defeated. Will never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Give him a prize. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah. Write that in his notes. Never be defeated. Write that in your notes. Never be defeated. Devil don't write my story. He's the author and the finisher. Woo! If you was expecting three points in the hoop, wrong church. I got three points in the hoop. But I always got praise and worship before it. Amen. Lift your hands one more time. Let's get ready to go to the word. Have y'all enough time to get the char? Mm. Jesus, we love you. We adore you. We worship your name. We worship your name. God, give us ears to hear and a heart to receive with meekness the engrafted word of the Lord able to save our souls in Jesus name church say man put your hands together real quick celebrate Jesus if you haven't go ahead and celebrate him while you're clapping hey go ahead give, give it to Jesus give it to him give him the praise give him the glory that's due his name I know it's been tough all week I know it's been tough all month but he's worthy and the glory, the honor, and the praise. While you're celebrating the Lord, stay in cele celebration. Help me to celebrate my beautiful wife. Almost 25 years. Prophetess of this house, prophetess trailer. Amen. Thank God for her, her ministry, all that she does in this house. Thank God for the leadership of this house, all the elders, Elder Hampton, Harvey, everyone in their respective places, all the leadership of this house music ministry doing an awesome job thank God for brother Weeks holding it down while my son is doing some traveling amen thank God for Lottie Daddy everybody amen to all of our first time guests hope you'll be a guest again next week if not we're going to stay here at church but welcome to the Epicenter Church I'm honored to have you all here hope that you're being blessed amen I did hear that, amen, we had a steam guest that was in the house. I think he raised his hand. You're running for judge. Amen. What section, brother? District 1, and what's that name? David Lindsay, running for District Judge 1. Amen. Research the man. We honored that he came in. Amen. Praise God. Turn around, look at it. 
the handsome bald head fell over there with a gray beard. That might be me and a couple of them. But I'm taller. Amen. But I want you to hear his name. And I want you to see his face. Amen. I think uh, uh, most of y'all know how I am when it comes to politics in the pulpit. But I am honored that he came to be with us. I'm honored that he's in the house. Amen. If he had any information, he's free to leave his information. You ought to get involved in the machine of politics. If you want your voice heard, you have to vote. Amen. Don't make no sense to say nothing after the fact. Amen. So let your voice be heard. God bless you, doctor. Good to see you. Amen. Thank you for being here. My hour is far spent. So I'm going to spend enough. No, I'm playing. <laughs> Stop prophesying. Let me prophesy. Y'all, y'all, this is a prophetic ministry. Everybody got a word but me. Huh? Psalms 111. I'm going to read one verse of scripture. And if you let me to work, I'm going to work. I'm already sweating, so I might as well work. Amen. Hallelujah. I just got all this singing in my spirit. Amen. God has smiled on me. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get them songs when you're going through. That's the ones that hold you. Oh, God has smiled on me. He's been good. I don't know about nobody else. And it's rude for him to smile and you don't smile back. Hey! He smiled on me, Reverend. Smiled on did he smile on you this morning? Glory be to God. He He's been set me Sometimes you got to think yourself happy. That's what Paul say. Paul, he stood before King Agrippa. He said, King, today I think myself happy. Glory be to God. Don't let nothing else sit in my spirit, but he's been good to me. My God, so many things could, but today he's been good to me. Today he's been sound. Do it again. To me He's been Let's go to the word. Psalms 11 verse number 1. If you have it, say loudly Amen. Ask everyone to briefly stand for one word of scripture. Let's honor the presence of the Lord. One word of scripture. I'm already preaching so I won't preach long. Just preach strong. Psalms 111 If you have it, say loudly Amen. The Bible says, in the Lord put I my what? In the Lord I put my what? How say ye to my soul? Say my soul. Flee as a bird. Flee as a bird to your mountain. In the Lord I put my trust, my confidence. And even though I'm putting my trust in the Lord, how is the Lord telling me to flee? But don't just flee, flee as a bird. And don't just flee as a bird, but go to the mountain. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, God told me to tell you, take the limits off. Yeah, yeah, they ain't heard you. Find you another neighbor because they don't know when to shot. Turn and they say, neighbor. Say, oh, neighbor. God told me to tell you, take the limits off. No ceilings. No walls. No boundaries. Say yes. Yes. Take the limits off. Take the limits off. Take the limits off. I want to finish our Sunday series for the month of October this month with this message, Limitless. I want to talk this morning about free to fly. Free to fly. 
Amen. I, 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 no, I, I'm going to be carnal if I do that. I'm going to be carnal if I do that. Yeah, because, no, I don't want to believe I can fly because y'all going to lock my dude up. But... He will fly, but he ain't flying. <laughs> Let that one meditate on you. Like. Let that marinate like what? Uh, what do you say? Like neck bones and juice. That's what. Uh. <laughs> but I want to. I really want to. To. Too, there was a there was a song when I was uh, when I was uh, back in the day when I used to sing with the boy groups and the boy groups. There was a song by a group called Troop, and, and, and Troop would say, "Spread my wing, so I can fly away." But he always had a destination to a place that I long for. See what I love about the scripture? He didn't just say flee like a bird. He said, go to the mountain. It ought to be something about your destination that makes you want to spread your wings. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There ought to be something about the hope of your calling that make you want to spread your wings. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There ought to be something about what God's calling you to that, that make you say, the cage is going to hold me down. The cage ain't going to hold me down. I want to talk to you about free to fly. Take the limits off. You may have your seat, but one more time as you lean to your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. take the limits off. Let me give you a little bit. Let me work just a little bit, and I'm getting out the way, I promise you. Birds, the scripture used here as the parallel he gave us an introduction. Uh, the psalmist said, I trust the Lord. I'm putting my confidence in God. This was not a place necessarily of, uh, of him saying he was so sure in himself. He lacked a certain level of self-assurity. He lacked a certain place of self-confidence. Not necessarily a major insecurity. Uh, but he, he was dealing with something that where he said in this situation... I don't even trust myself. I can't put all my confidence in my gifting. Why? Because uh, it's obvious my situation is not a, even in my confidence. My situation uh, is not freeing me from the cage. Yeah. He, he, here's a reality. You can be a bird and not have the ability to fly. You don't take nothing away from the reality that this is a bird. But the introduction to the bird, and this is where I got to go. The introduction to the bird is God is calling me to fly because of who I am. But because of who I am and presently where I am, I have to be honest, if, if, if it happens, it's gonna, I'm going to need God. Especially considering what he's asking me to do and where he's asking me to go. It would be one thing if he was just telling me to fly. But he gave me a direction to go higher than the place of my release. He says, hey bird, flee. Watch this. He didn't say, hey, bird, fly. He said, hey, bird, flee. Which makes me to understand there is no flying until I'm free. And obviously the bird is not free enough to fly because the direction was not fly. The direction was run or flee. Now, I'm a, I'm a person who understands symbolism, patterns, colors, numbers, all of these things. And uh, so when he, he uses the parallel, he says, 
How do you say to my soul? Say my soul. Flee as a bird. So the parallel here of the symbolism of the, of the soul is the bird. The bird is a replacement for the soul or a parallel of the soul of the psalmist. So it's, it's, it's like God is saying, I want you to pay attention to the bird and consider your own soul. Symbol, sim, symbolism or even symbolic in a dream when birds are in cages. When a bird is or, or escaping their cage, they symbolize, watch this, our will for independence. In a dream, when you, when you see a bird trying to fly out of a cage or flee a cage, it, it is a sign or a symbol that I'm willing or I want to be independent. It is a sign that I want liberty and a better harmony for my atmosphere far away from these rules and what is possessing me. So anytime you're dreaming about flying out of a cage, it is the soul expressing that I want to be free. It is the soul saying, I, I, want, I want liberty. I, I want Better harmony, say harmony. Yeah, I, I want to be free as a bird. I want to be free as a bird. But what if the bird isn't free? We, we can imagine what it feels like to be free as a bird. But can you imagine what it feels like to be a caged bird? Can you imagine what it feels like being a caged bird? What's wrong with caging a bird? I'll tell you what's wrong with caging a bird. All caged birds are either captured or captive bred. They're either captured and brought into captivity or they were born in captivity. In the wild, these beautiful beings are never alone. In the wild, a bird, if separated even for just a moment, they can call wildly to flock mates. Birds are flock oriented, other than maybe eagles. They preen each other. They fly together. They play together. They share. They share egg incubation. In other words, they share. They share the responsibility of covering each other's seed. Glory be to God. If you like the vision and make it plain, there's a bird that'll run with you. They cover each other eggs. Huh? That's what it used to be in the community. I'll look out for your children if you look out for mine. Yeah, yeah. Egg incubation came in duties. Yeah, one mother hen to sit on the eggs. Yeah, while, while daughter went to work. Then daughter come and sit on the rest of the eggs while her sister went to work. Y'all ain't said nothing. <laughs> they shared the responsibility of covering each other's eggs. Many species of bird mate for life and they share parenting tasks. Most birds will not take a second mate in the wild even if they lost their first one. Yeah, that's living in liberty and freedom as a bird. Not being a cage bird. When I'm a cage bird, my life in capacity or my life in captivity is often a death sentence. The longer I'm in captivity, the shorter my lifespan. The longer I'm in captivity, the more surety I'm going to die in this condition. Life in captivity is often a death sentence for birds who may suffer, watch this, from malnutrition. Because when you're in a cage, you wait for others to feed you. And you can only eat what they give you. But when you're free, you eat when you want to eat. You eat how you want to eat. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh -huh. But when you're in captivity, you got to wait for somebody else to feed you. And you can only eat what they choose to give you. Oh yeah, you suffer from malnutrition. 
Watch this. When you're a cage bird, you live in an improper environment. Say improper environment. You know what's not proper about a cage environment? Because God never intended for a bird to live in a cage. And because God never intended for the bird to live in a cage, any cage you put a bird in is an improper environment. It can be a small cage. It can be a large cage. It can be a cage with a sofa. It can be a cage with a flat screen TV and a pool outside. But if it's a cage, it's a cage. You can make the cage look nice, but if it's a cage, oh, y'all ain't said nothing. You can put all the birds in the cage with me, but if it's a cage, it's a cage. And it's hard for me to call my home a cage or when my cage is my home. Oh, I'm about to preach in here. Watch this. What else happens when you cage a bird? Loneliness. And the stress of confinement, say stress of confinement. Yeah, there's some stress that comes simply because I was born to be wild. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I was born to stretch out and, and this ain't letting me. Or oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Birds are meant to fly. And be with others of their own kind in a natural environment. Say natural environment. Confinement causes birds to have temper tantrums and mood swings. We call that a crazy bird. Sometimes you call it a dingy bird. Y'all ain't said nothing. Huh? But what's, what's making the bird crazy? It's the cage. It's because you want me to act natural in an unnatural environment, unnatural environment. Oh, y'all ain't said nothing. You want me to act like uh, everything is all right when actually I'm a caged bird. Can I talk just a little bit? The, the point of this is birds are meant to fly and birds are not meant to live in captivity. Life in captivity is often a death sentence for any kind of bird. Psalms 111 says, in the Lord put out my trust. Then he tells the Lord, now how are you going to say to me? How are you going to say to me, say to my soul, save my soul? How does the Lord speak to my soul and say, flee as a bird to your mountain?" That jumped out at me. Because even while I'm discussing the benefits of being a free bird and the, the catastrophe of being a caged one, we're all thinking physically. But the reality, God did not speak to the physical part of the psalmist. The Bible says, how do you say to my soul, flee? Ah, preacher, it made me go back. God said to me, he said, trailer, most of what we're calling the mood swing, the temper tantrum, the malnutrition, he said, that's a response to the cage. But the atmosphere is not the cage. The cage that the bird is really in is the walls and the corridors of their own mind. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He said, here's the ceiling. Here's the walls. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He said, so I can't speak to the body. I have to speak to the soul. He says, the soul must become the bird, not the body. You're so busy trying to place your body in atmospheres that your mind ain't even prepared for. You're bringing your body to relationships that your mind ain't even free enough to enjoy. You're trying to take a position on the job when you're still caged in your mind. Y'all ain't said nothing. And you can never stretch wings if your mind can't send the signal to the wind. Tell somebody to take the limits off. 
It's a mind thing. Uh, it's a mind thing because there's, there's two types of birds. Oh, y'all, y'all with me? There's two types of birds that are caged. It's the, it's the bird that is captive bred. It is the bird that is raised in captivity. It is raised in a life on limits. A life of malnutrition because it's limited food. A, a, a life of frustration, uh, aggravation. Because it, it's not enough room, y'all. It's not enough room. I'm suffocating. I'm suffocating in my soul. My soul ain't getting fed what it needs to be fed. Y'all ain't said nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm caged in my soul because the Lord speaks to the soul. He speaks to the mind and he says you need to flee as a bird. How do I flee as a bird if I'm in a cage? He says there, 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 there is a mentality that you can be caged so long that even if I open the door your mind won't let you flee. You can be caged so long that even when you're free, you're still systemically and systematically inside of the system that bred you. Yeah, yeah. You do enough time. When you come home, you're still doing time. Y'all quiet now. You can live in, you can come home, be in the house, uh, but you're still going through the same routine that they gave you. Oh, y'all ain't said nothing. Uh, when you was in 24, 23 hours of solitary confinement, uh, you'll still wait for them to give you a meal. You'll still wait for them to tell you when to brush your teeth. Uh, you're free. You can brush your teeth when you want. You can shower when you want, but you're in your mind. In your mind. You haven't learned how to flee yet. You, you, can, you can be in a, a bad relationship. Y'all ain't said nothing. And take that relationship into every other relationship. Different bodies. Different places. Different people. Y'all ain't said nothing. Different ethnicity. Different social economic brackets. Uh, you know what's the same in all those relationships? Uh, not just you, but your mind. Your mind about every relationship uh, is that you've been captive bred. Y'all ain't said nothing. Uh, you've been in captivity so long uh, that this is the way you've been bred. Uh, uh, and know what's limiting you? Uh, your mind. Uh, your mind is limiting you. Uh, you've learned this why Watch other birds live in captivity and you believe that that's your best. You, you watch two and three generations live in poverty. You believe that's your best. You watch every other marriage before you in a divorce. You think that's your best. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I don't care. I'm going to preach just like this. You, you think that the best you're supposed to do is a used car amen and work 16 hours a day. Ain't nothing wrong with it if that's your max Maximum, uh, but oftentimes that's our limit uh, and the reason it's our limit uh, is because that's the ceiling that was brought before us uh, when we lived in captivity and it became our normality captive bread teaches you to live a life with limits captivity bread tells you there'll come a point when you realize that you were made to fly, but you'll never fly. Because captivity puts a cap on even your God-given potential. Yeah, yeah. When it's time to, 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 to experience flight, you can feel your muscles growing. You can feel your wings growing. But because you never saw anybody else fly, wings are foreign to you. The purpose of them. The purpose of them. It, they, become, they become where you just got a lot of flap. And you flapping and you flapping and you do a lot of talking but you ain't going nowhere. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You do a whole lot of flapping. Huh? And the truth is that man tired of you talking about what you going to do. And he ready for you to do it but you ain't going to do it. Because huh? you ain't never seen nobody else do it. Huh? You ain't never seen your mama do it. You ain't never seen y'all quiet now. You really want to do it but you don't know what it is you're supposed to do. Because you ain't never seen it done. Because you captive bread. 
There's something that's inside of you that want to be greater, but you don't know what greater look like. All you know is what a cage look like. You flapping in a cage, and other people in the cage they flapping with you. We we used to have we used to have parakeets. My mom had us we had a bunch of parakeets, and they did a whole lot of talking and a whole lot of flapping, but they ain't going nowhere. They talk noise to you, and you free. They're talking all that noise to you, but you're free to go where they ain't never gone, to do what they've never done. And they're talking crazy to you from a cage. They're talking crazy to you, or mocking you. But I left this morning and left you there. I came back this afternoon, you still there. When I go to bed tonight, you're going to still be there. you criticizing me, but I'm growing, I'm showing, I'm getting it done. Huh? How you talking about me and I'm producing? And the only thing you can do is drop some stuff on the newspaper. And live with it. Flapping and talking ain't going nowhere. Say, neighbor, don't do all that flapping and don't go nowhere. The truth is, I have a desire to do it, it's just I've never seen it done. I have a desire to be to be bigger. So I ain't never seen what bigger looks like. I know I got feathers for a purpose, but what's the purpose? Beautiful wings. Beautiful wings. All kind of gifts and talents and, and anointings. And I'll stretch out and all I touch is walls. When I stretch out, all I touch it's walls and I'm living amongst the dung and I'm living amongst mess and I know God did create me for that and, and I know that there's something on the inside that's working on the outside that said can't you see I'm trying to put a change in your life speaks to my soul he don't speak to my wings because my wings going to grow regardless The gift and the calling is without repentance. Sometimes God is waiting for you to catch up with the anointing. God already had it on the calendar. By this time, you should be this place. You ain't waiting on God. Stop lying. God waiting on you. You is not. I say you is not waiting on God. And not only is he there, he's in the future waiting on you. He waiting on you to say, I got to get out of this cage. Even though I'm bred in this cage. You can tell me you're bred in a cage. Because cage folk keep talking about what you're trying to leave. It's all good in the hood. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm, I'm malnutrition. It, it, listen, if I'm eating this, but I I'm malnutritious here. Flapping and talking. Flapping and talking. Flapping and talking. Captivity would teach you how to be comfortable in the mess. Content. Content living on yesterday's news. That's about time you get it. No fresh revelation, no fresh information, no fresh manifestation. Old news in a cage. Are you listening to me? Yet the whole time, whole time, you're trying to stretch out like trooping somebody in there talking about, nice like this, I wish. You, say, bro, I want a new song. I want a new song. Israel says it's hard to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how it feels now when, when Maya Angelou writes her book and she says, I know why the cage bird sings. See, my Maya Angelou, who we know is now this one of the greatest poets, whether male or female, one of the greatest orators of thought and concept and creativity and imagery. Y'all know her history born in poverty. Eight years old when she's raped and molested repeatedly. It causes her to have self-reflection in self-insecurity. She sees herself now as a, she could see herself now as a victim 
instead of a victor. She sees herself now as ugly and unwarranted and only usable for a purpose of abuse. Yeah, yeah. Someone deciding to cage you for their entertainment. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Somebody else deciding to cage your beauty. You're not pretty enough for nobody else to want you, but I'll crawl over every other night. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And if you're not careful, captivity will breed in you that you're not an eagle, you're a chicken. And your wings going to only let you go so far. You come on back to the coop. And, and, and live eating off the ground. Whatever I feed you. Make you fat enough for me to fry you. Y'all ain't said nothing. No, no. I know why the caged bird sings, she goes on to say, because the reality is if I didn't have a song, I wouldn't have had nothing at all. I know Israel say I can't sing the Lord's song in a, in a strange land, but Maya said I was singing a song for hope. Singing a song so I didn't let the enemy rob me of the one thing that I had and that was a mind to be better than the condition that I'm bred in. I could have lived my life as a rape victim or I can say rape happened but it won't keep me here. Y'all ain't saying I can, I can accept what they saying that I'm ugly and I'm black and ain't nobody gonna want me or I can say no I'm beautiful and I want me and I love me and that I'm not gonna live in this cage with you forever. One day I'm gonna stretch my wings. So I'm singing until that day. I'm practicing my song that I'm going to sing in the wild, y'all. Whoosh, I felt that. I'm practicing my song uh, that I'm going to sing when I get to the mountain. Uh, and I'm singing it right now in the cage. Uh, y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm singing freedom while I'm still in chains. Uh, that's to let you know that I'm not going to stay here. Uh, I'm singing freedom uh, while I'm working it out. Because uh, I already know he's going to work it out. Uh, I might have been born like this, but I refuse to die like this. Cage bird, but I'm singing. See, see, folk, want, they're waiting for you to sing when you get there. And the truth is, the soul got to start singing before the manifestation. Oh, soul, why are you quiet within me? If you're hoping God, sing now. Shout now. We're going to testify later. I start singing while I was in the cage. No, oh, no. There are two types of birds. Can I give me a little bit more and I'm going to get out of here? Somebody say go a little further. There's the cage that is captive bred. I was born into it. Born into poverty. Born into struggle. Born with a certain lifestyle that gave me limits. But then there is what I call the cage of self-infliction. A cage of self-infliction that's, that's captive raised or when the door is open but you, your mentality will not let you escape, say captive raised. When I'm captive raised, I can begin to self-inflict myself because the way I was brought up. I was born into a situation that I may not have no control over, but then I accept it. And that cage becomes self-inflicted. Because when God begins to open doors, I don't walk through them. When God begins to give me an opportunity, I don't take it. That's what Israel told Moses. The promised land is everything that God promised us, but in our own eyes were grasshoppers. So they self-inflicted a cage because their mentality was a caged bird. Sometimes it's not that God ain't opening doors. You just won't flee through them. And it's a mind, it's a mentality that, that, is, that is bred in captivity, stroked in fear, and founded in comfort. 
But it ain't all that bad. I mean, it could be worse. And you're so busy thinking about how it could be worse, you're not focused on how it could be better. It's a self-inflicted wall. It's a self-inflicted ceiling. It ain't the man keeping you down. It's you keeping you caged. It ain't what your mama did you no more. How long are you going to keep talking about your mama? How long are you going to keep talking about, well, you know, you understand, I ain't getting no love. Good. Well, go get some therapy. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And spend some time at the altar and read your Bible and read your book and go see Susie Osmond and after that, go see Joyce Meyer. Go see whoever you got to see. How long will you live with the ceiling as an excuse not to fly? Every time God begins to push you and pull you, you give God a reason why you can't fly. Every time God begins to, y'all don't understand what I've been through. I don't understand what you've been through. Only you understand it. Even if I went through what you went through, I'm going through it maybe different than the way you went through it. Uh, amen. Because your mentality about your situation may be different about my mentality. Amen. So it don't make me not sensitive, uh, but maybe I had to survive. Uh, maybe I had to come out of that thing. Uh, and I'm not dealing with it from the same way. Uh, they told me the sky is the limit to all I have but God told me go to the mountain it's how you it's how you choose to live see that's that's self inflicted that's when you cap the bread when you cap the bread you, you got to be careful that you don't be comfortable living in the, in the cage of your mind telling you that this is it Telling you, telling you, you'll never love again. Why? Why? Of course you'll never love again if you can't uh, love yourself enough to let somebody else love you. Y'all quiet now. You're living in a cage of that last hurt. Y'all quiet now. You're living in a cage of that last hurt. Here your wings need nourishment. Y'all say I'm being nice. And your wings need nourishment. You're going to live in malnourishment. Nice like this, I'd wish. <laughs> Lord, let raindrops would fall. Come on, Eddie King. Uh, say self-inflicted. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, don't be your own cage. Let me get out of here. And then there is the other cage bird that is caught and caged. See, it's a different when you're captive bred and then all of a sudden you're caught in the snare of an enemy. All of a sudden the unexpected comes in. I was living free. Then I got caught in the snare. I was living victorious. Then I got trapped. I didn't see this coming, but it got me. Y'all ain't said nothing. I, I was all right. I don't know where the depression came from, y'all. Y'all ain't said nothing. I was, I was doing good. And then all of a sudden, trouble happened. Uh, the marriage was wonderful. Then all of a sudden, this took place. And, and my finances and the job was good. Then all of a sudden, COVID hit. And it shifted my economy. See, it's one thing to be captive bred. It's a whole nother feeling to know what it is to be free and then be caged. When you deal with birds that are caught and caged, birds that are smuggled, birds that are trapped, uh -huh. birds that are smuggled, or, or, or they're more smuggled. Watch this. In the United States, birds are more smuggled than any other animal. Yeah. Before being shipped or before going through transition system, birds are often, watch this, force fed. In other words, they begin to try and give them something. The bird rejects it. Bird said, that ain't what I'm accustomed to. I live better than this before. You ain't going to make me accept this. I'm not, I'm not living like that. Now, God told me I can have better than I, I done had better than this. I've been better than this. This is not who I am. I've been better than this. I can, I've had better than this. Uh, you trying to force me to live like this and eat this. And I don't, 
Don't live like this. I'm force feeding you. Force feeding. This is why captive birds are mal malnourished. Because either they feed you what they want. Or you say, I don't eat whatever. You know, you don't give me what's been offered to idols. You, you can't expect me to live beneath my privilege. You know, I'm not eating no anything. Uh, I know the situation I'm in. I know the condition I'm in. Uh, but I'm not taking no anything. Y'all ain't saying that. I know it's lonely in this cage. Uh, but I'll be doggone if I take any kind of man, any kind of woman. Y'all ain't saying, you ain't going to force me. You ain't going to, y'all ain't saying nothing. I know it's, I know it's tight. Uh, hey man, but I ain't living no anywhere. I ain't living no any kind of way. Y'all ain't saying had nothing. I, I'd rather be in a one bedroom apartment by myself than live in any kind of life and live in any kind of way and accept any kind of thing. I know I'm in a cage but you ain't just, I'm just not agreeing with this stuff. See a cage bird recognizes the cage but refuses to forget it's the bird. Y'all missed that. See the captive bird is raised in captivity so it normalizes the cage the caught bird is brought into captivity acknowledges the cage but say I don't belong here acknowledges the situation uh, but say soon and very soon we going to see the king uh, acknowledges the reality and say but I, I promise you I die before I eat this uh, y'all ain't said nothing the cage bird is often force fed. How do they get it to stay in the cage? Brother Emmanuel, he clips, clips his wings. You don't have to clip the wings of the captive bred bird. It doesn't know what his wings are for. But if I've flown before, you're going to get a hard time out of me. If you think you're going to just pull y'all ain't saying, <laughs> oh, but if I flew before, you're going to have a hard time out of me just telling me to go sit in the corner, baby. Uh, 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 uh. I know what these things here for. You know, you be coming, come on, you put your hands on me. I, I got a big tooth. Pup. You better back up off of me. Y'all think I'm playing? Look what they say. They say the wings are clipped. And the beaks are taped shut. Not only does it take away your ability to fly, it want to take your voice. Y'all ain't said nothing. It want to take your ability to speak. Why? Because if I think it and I speak it, I'll be it. The power of my voice. The power of my beak. Cut the other one flapping and yapping because he don't know what his beak for or his wings for. But I know what my beak is for. And I know that my tongue is the muscle to the manifestation of my faith. I know what my wings are for. And you trying to hold me You trying to bind me You trying to keep me in captivity By clipping my wings Shutting my mouth You already got me in a cage What you clipping my wings for? You already got me in a cage Why are you closing my mouth? Because you done stuck me in a cage With these captive bread and you're afraid I'm going to start talking to them and telling them you ain't got to live like this. I done been to the mountaintop and I've seen y'all ain't said you afraid that I might tell my sisters we can have better than this. You afraid that I might start talking to these other captive birds and say you got wings, two wings to fly, two wings to go higher, two wings. Yes, Lord, I said that. You know what? The devil should have killed you instead of letting you get saved and putting you back in the cage. Because when he put you in the cage, you went there to get other folk delivered. They should have killed Harriet Tubman. They should have killed Sojourner Truth. They should have killed Christmas Addicts. You let me live and I'm going back me in a cage but I don't have a cage mentality. You put me in a cage but I don't have a cage mentality. If I go back to the hood, I'm getting them out the hood. If I go back, y'all ain't saying nothing. If I go to the family reunion, I'm gonna let my wings, y'all ain't saying, I'm gonna open up my beak. You got 
to shut the mouth of the one that was once free. Clip my wings. But see, the devil make you think that's forever. Uh-uh. Your wings can only be clipped for a season. Yeah, you could you could pull Samson's hair out huh? only for a season, cause eventually his hair gonna grow back. Huh? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Huh? You ought to be honest sometimes. You know the devil got me. Huh? He got me in a season, but I feel my hair growing back now. Huh? Yeah, that enemy caught me. It got me out to shut my mouth up. I wasn't where I needed to be. Huh? I was wrestling in my mind, but I got my mind back now. Huh? And I feel my anointing coming back. And I feel my strength coming back. Huh? I feel. I feel my power coming back up. I feel the glory and I feel the anointing. I feel the power. I feel it coming back. Shia! I feel my feathers. I feel my wings. I feel my wings. You should have killed me because I refuse to let you cage me. You should have killed me because I refuse to be a spectacle. You should have killed me. A caught bird is not a caged bird. A caged bird has to change the mentality. A caught bird is waiting for an opportunity. Caged bird has to go into a transition. So even if I've been caged and bred, there's still hope for me. And often the hope for me is that God don't put me in a situation where they got a caught bird in the cage with a cage bird. And the caught bird gonna tell the cage bird, uh, we gonna get up out of here. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Huh? And when I go, I'm taking you with me. When I go higher, I'm taking you with me. When I go to the mountain, I'm taking you with me. Can you say it? Can you say it? Cage birds. Get to, get to tell a captive bird what they wings for. Right there in the cage. Learning how to fly, even though they've never flown before. Ha, this is why the cage bird's singing. The cage bird is teaching. She's singing while she's in the cage, teaching them songs of freedom. Teaching them we ain't gonna die like this. Teaching them. What happened happened, but you're not what you're not what happened to you. You you don't have to die like this. It may have hurt it, it may have happened. We're about to get healed and helped because we're gonna get the hell out of here. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We're not gonna live like this. We coming about the projects. We ain't gonna live like this. Huh? We ain't gonna die in poverty. We ain't gonna live like this. Huh? We ain't gonna die in depression. We ain't gonna live like this. Huh? We coming out of here. Open, open, yep, yep. Give me, give me, come on. I'm gonna teach you how to fly. Her innocence, Maya Angelou, innocence was stolen from her. She was born in the poverty. She had a, a self image distortion, racial oppression, but she kept her mind and refused to die in the cage. And she got free. And when she got free, they tried to cage her again. And what they messed up is when they caged her again, she began to teach others how to fly from the cage. They tried to cage her in her greatness. They tried to cage her after her, her exposure. They tried to cage her and they tried to capture her and bring her back into captivity. When they brought her back to captivity, other birds got to see her. Birds that would have never saw her. Now they get to see her. They're watching how she go through compared to how they go through. And they're saying, she don't, she don't go through like we go through. She in the same boat. She in the same cage, but not the same mentality. She sings a different song while she going through. That brother there, he built different. Yeah, they done clipped his wings. We still got wings. And every other day, he checking. He checking. I heard him over there rejoicing when he got one feather. 
I got 20 feathers. What he rejoicing about? Brother, brother, they got our mouth tied down and, and your mouth ain't tied down. Uh, what, what, what's, what's going on with you? Why is the enemy trying so hard to keep you caged? We, we know this since he put you in here. He don't open the door no more. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> we, we, we know this, that, that since he put you up in here, they don't, they don't open no doors no more. They don't give favor to you. Like, they'll let us get the opportunity, but why they won't present the opportunity to you? Huh? Well, they don't want me to get the opportunity. Because huh? they know if I get the opportunity, huh? I'm going to take us up out of here. Huh? Devil don't want me with the opportunity. He'll give it to a thief. Huh? He'll give it to a robber. He'll give it to somebody undelivered. Huh? He don't want me to get the microphone. Huh? He don't want me to have the platform. Huh? He don't want me to have the opportunity. Because huh? if I get the door open, huh? I'm getting all of us out of here. Huh? And we're not going to live in the chicken coop. Huh? The mountain. The mountain huh? is where we're going to live. Huh? The mountain huh? is where we're going to go. The mountain. I got to get out of here. God told me to tell you, keep on singing because a change coming. Keep on singing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Keep singing in your transition. Huh? Keep singing about where you're going. Huh? Keep singing about what God's going to do. Huh? Don't get tired huh? and don't change your song. Huh? Any day now, huh? God's going to open the door. Huh? And you got to be ready, 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 ready huh? to fly to where you're singing about. Huh? To fly to where you're going. Huh? To fly. Because the real limit that most of us birds have is not our wings. It's not our beaks. It's the limits on our minds. And I'm my soul. I got the creativity. I got the gift. I got the skill. I got the anointing. But what's limiting me is my mind. So he says to my soul, flee. He's not, he's not talking to my body. He's talking to my mind. He tells my mind, you can fly. And until my mind believes what he says, my wings will never do it. I can have all the feathers in the world. If I believe that I'm a duck, I'm a waddle, when I'm an eagle, and I'm supposed to eat on the mountains. When he spoke to his soul, he said, flee for the mountains. How many birds live on mountains? Only eagles live in the mountains. God never called me a chicken. You did. Y'all ain't saying nothing. When God called me, he called me after him. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He got the eagle eyes. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And every king every, must produce after his kind. Either I'm a lion or I'm an eagle. I can't be no chicken. Not if God is my father. Speaks to my soul. Because he sees. The only reason you're in that cage. Is because you don't believe you can fly. Lord, I, how you know? Because I opened the door. And you didn't come through. Maybe you need another season in the cage. Why would you leave me in the cage? This is what God told me. He said there's three ways to free your soul to fly. Stay where you at. Number one way to free your soul to fly is you have to free your soul from the trauma of the cage. You have to free your soul from the trauma of the cage. All the things your mind is going through. You got to get that free. No matter how beautiful your wings are. They'll never be used if the mind is never healed. The soul must get healed. 
all of our delivery process may look different, but God is a deliverer. I can be honest, when God delivered me, I didn't need AA, I didn't need NA, I didn't need nothing. I came to the altar, he zapped it, delivered demons, came out, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I've been running for the Lord for 25 years. That's my process. That may not be yours. You may need the altar and a therapist. You may need the altar and medicine. God, y'all see how y'all got quiet? Medicine is not anti-God. Paul, take a little wine for your stomach's sake. It's for the healing of the... Now, abuse of anything can be bad. Right? I don't want to... I ain't going to get no pills because I don't want to have no... I'm not going to do medical abuse. But you're still with a man that's abusing you. Nights like this, I wish. Huh? So we... we We'll, we will justify our trauma. You know, we attack the person who had drug abuse and then want everybody to understand why you in spousal abuse. Everybody got their vice. His drug was fentanyl. Your drug was Fred. You can't live without Fred. Fred, bust your head and you can't live without Fred. So you can't talk about fentanyl if we can't talk about Fred. It's easy to point across the street at somebody else and they struggle. The reality is you live on Cage Street too. you're afraid to be free because all you've ever known is the cage I said you're afraid to be free not that you don't want to be but you're afraid to be and your soul keeps convincing you that this is where we need to be even though your wings are saying let's stretch out let's stretch out but you got to free yourself from the trauma of the cage because the trauma is worse than the cage itself I heard Bishop Jake said this way he said God can deliver your body from it instantly but your mind may need a process of deliverance this is why I tell folk if you've been in a long term relationship don't go just jump in one real quick y'all quiet now because my body might have been free, but my mind may still be caged. And you didn't, you didn't just marry my body, you married my soul. Soul mate, welcome to my cage. So let me get free from the trauma of my cage. How do you get free? How do you get free to fly? First, you free your soul from the trauma of the cage. That's when you're captive bred. Stop making excuses for what you know wasn't right. Y'all ain't saying that. No, 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 no. Some of y'all gonna want to go and confront the one that hurt you, and they may be honest and, and give you that release. And some folk will tell you, get out of my face. And there you go again, locking yourself back in the cage. Huh? Huh? Their apology is not necessary for your healing. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Because huh? if you're waiting on sorry, you'll live in sorry conditions uh, for the rest of your life. Uh, I'm responsibility. My responsibility is to get myself out of my cage. But they don't live in my head. I do. They be talking about you written, I'm written space in your head. No, 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 no. They don't live there. Folk will leave you, and 20 years later, you still got them there. Folk will abuse you, and 30 years later, you still got them. And when all in their life going to see Jesus, they going to heaven, and you living in hell on earth, you better get your mind delivered.
Yes, Lord, I'll say that. You can have your spirit saved and your soul sick. The spirit and the soul is two different things. You can be full of the Holy Ghost and full of trauma. One time I say, I said it again. You can be full of the Holy Ghost and still full of trauma. And you're saying, God, why won't you take this away from me? He said, you flee. I'm telling your soul, you flee. You get it. You do what you got to do. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Easy for somebody to tell me I wouldn't do all that. You don't have my trauma. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You don't have my trauma. You weren't there self-medicating. You don't know what it's like huh? to drink, to have to drink, to put yourself to sleep at night so you can stop seeing the visions. You don't know what it is to chase after what you know you don't need, but you feel you need it because you're dealing with the matters of the mind. You don't know my cage. I figure after you got the Holy Ghost, that'll be enough. The Holy Ghost saved my spirit. And now the Holy Ghost is trying to lead and guide me to what I need for my mind. You got saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled preachers committing suicide. Not because their spirit wasn't saved, but their minds wasn't free. And when somebody was telling them what they need to do for their mind, somebody who's out of balance keep telling them what God already did for their spirit. God saved my spirit. Now my spirit is trying to save my soul. How do I, how do I fly, Bishop? I really want to fly. I don't want to shout about it. I want to fly. How do you really get free, Bishop? Take the responsibility to get that trauma dealt with. Get counseling. Get therapy. Get prayer. Get fasting. Read your Bible. Read a word. Get your, change your surroundings. Anything that smell like the cage got to go. I say anything that even y'all ain't saying nothing. Anything in my life that look like that old newspaper got to go. Anything that remind me of the cage got to go. I don't want to dress like I used to dress when I had that cage mentality. I don't want to go where I used to go when I had a cage mentality. And if your conversation sound like the cage, I'm cutting your conversation. Because you trigger my trauma. Are you listening to me? And it's on me to keep my peace, not on you to give me peace. It's on me. It's on me. So when you start changing that mind, your cage start looking different. What used to hold you, they ain't holding me no more. That don't work no more. That used to get me, but it don't don't trigger me no more yeah yeah look at this number two this is how you get your soul to fly don't be afraid to fall when you're attempting to fly the great C.L. Franklin had a message called the eagle stirs her nest he talked about how the eagle didn't just eat in the mountains Minister Hop Hopkins that man he raised she raises her eaglets where she eats. Y'all quiet. See, some of us got one diet for us and another diet for our children. No, 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 no. It's on you to develop in your children the tastes for the mountain. Y'all ain't saying nothing. No, no, you're going to come and sit in here and eat where I'm eating. Yeah, you might not have a full developed taste bud for it yet because you know the taste buds on the tongue of the immature are different than the taste of the mature. When I was young, I didn't like cheesecake. I'm old and now I don't like wine candy. Y'all don't even know what wine candy is from New Orleans. That's uh, Jolly Ranchers. Yeah, that's the original name. We give stuff names in New Orleans. 
We don't care what you call it. We're going to call it something else. We don't even care what your real name is. We're going to name you something else. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Like Prophet this trailer said, we don't know what to call you. He said, what, what thing at her at? You're like, what's a thing at her? You. What thing at her? Come on. <laughs> huh? But in the, in the message, Eagle stirs her nest, talks about how the eagle goes out every day and hunts to come back and feed those young eaglets while they're being developed. Gives just enough to that one, just enough to that one. Feed them till they full while they're in this big, beautiful nest she's built. But as they get older, she begins to pluck away cotton out the nest and feathers out the nest. So now all of a sudden this nest is poking them where they used to sleep and it's not as comfortable as it used to be in. She used to feed them, feed them three and four and five times a day, but those meals begin to get scarcer. She, she only come now two times a day. Give you a little meal, man. One time a day, now the chicks, the, uh, uh, the eaglets, they're getting restless, but they don't also realize that they're growing. Mama can see it. Beaks getting larger. Talons growing. Wings are growing. And then all of a sudden, the mother eagle is on her way back, but this time she ain't got no food in her mouth, Brother Lampton. This time she takes and looks at her eaglets. She goes at them full speed. She gets right next to the nest and she, whoo, she knocks them out the nest. And they're falling down the side of the mountain. You would almost think that's cruel. So now the little eaglets in panic because of the fall, are forced to use what they never would have used had they not fallen. Now they're trying to use their wings. The fall is developing the muscles because if I don't do something, one thing's for certain, I'm going to die anyway. So I might as well try and fly. And all of a sudden, Sister Celine, right before they hit the ground, Mother, Mother Eagle swoops down and gets all three of them. But she don't put them in a place where they're comfortable. She takes them all the way back to the top of that mountain, put them right back in that uncomfortable basket, feeds them once a day. Then the next time she comes back again. <laughs> knock them right back off the nest this woman is crazy why is this woman doing it this is a this is a crazy situation why is God keep putting me in situation like I just got through last time barely got all of that one time and now here I am again going through something and right before you look like you're gonna hit it God picks you right back up but he don't let you live in the low place he said, I called you to the mountain and you're going to learn to fly and live in the mountain. I'm not accepting nothing else. I'm not accepting no other level. And that's why no other level will ever let you be comfortable because God didn't call you to the low level. You can't be afraid to fall if you're going to fly. In fact, it's the fall that develops the flight in you. He knocks, she knocks him down again. And this time, the eagle says, I've been, in this, I've been in this situation before. You knocked me out that nest a couple of times. But I got a surprise for you this time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I learned through the things that I suffered. Huh? I learned how to live holy. Huh? I learned how, how to live right. I learned it wasn't a loss, it was a lesson. I learned how to hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles. I've learned, yeah, yeah. If it wasn't for the fall, I wouldn't know how to fly. <laughs> if they hadn't knocked me down. <laughs> I know Jesus picked me up, but he put me right back again. I got knocked down again. Jesus picked me right back up. And then one day he spoke to my soul and said, Now you flee to 
to the mountain. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you can't be afraid to fall if you're going to learn how to fly. And the last point, I'm done. Brother Sidney, we must learn to maximize the ceiling before you make a move for the door. I must say that again. Maximize your ceiling before you make a move for the door. Why? If the sky is the limit, then God wants to give me a breakthrough. I learn through the things I suffer. Right? So the cage bird, just like the eagle on the mountain, is learning how to use her wings even before she gets out the cage. Sometimes we're trying so hard for the door that if you ain't learn how to fly, you're unprepared for the open door. Sometimes the cage is preparing you for the promotion. Don't, don't, especially if you were captive bred, especially if you come from a certain background, a certain environment, all this is new to you. Don't run for a door if you hadn't maximized your cage. Sometimes the cage is actually just like the mountain for development. Learn to maximize the room you're in before you chase an open door. Fly every day up to the ceiling of your cage and maximize your level you're on. See what happens is if every day I come to that cage, you at that ceiling, eventually one day I'm going to open that door. Even if my intentions was to just put you in a bigger cage. Once I open that door, yeah, that's all I needed. I just needed an opportunity. Because I already know I know how to fly. And I already got my directions. It's the mountain that I'm going. I just need you to open that door. I have maximized this room. I have maximized this level. I'm healed in my mind. I'm saved. I'm healed in my spirit. I've disconnected myself from folk that's talking foolish. I maximized this room. The devil can't get me no more. I maximized this room. God, you can trust me with an open door. If you open that door, I'm going to the mountain. If you ain't maximized the room, why are you trying to run for the door? Learn. Stay there. Let folk fall off they're supposed to fall off. And go through the transition. Your beak gonna break the band. Go through the transition. Those clip wings will eventually grow again. Go through the transition. Maximize this cage. Oh, I understand my situation. I know I'm here. I know why I'm here. I might as well go through my development. Take what I got to take. But don't, don't you think for one minute that when God opens up this door that I won't be ready. Oh, I'm going to be ready. And don't you think for one minute that I'm going back to the chicken coop don't you think for one minute that I'm going to live beneath my privilege. I done suffered long enough. I've gotten strong enough. My language is that of the mountain. So I'm not living nowhere else but the mountain. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you're free to fly. Take the limits off. 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 I'm free. Let's go. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding. My soul is resting 
It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, stand your feet. We're about to go home. Oh, say I am free. Praise the Lord. knowledge and as he has poured into us father we ask you now to pour back into him strength energy restore his virtue father refill him again and empower him with your spirit and pour, pour a special blessing out upon him for him being faithful in laboring and delivering the word to us today we thank you for it in jesus name amen hallelujah again somebody say i'm free and i can fly say i'm free and I can fly. Well, hallelujah. We thank God for speaking that powerful word and visiting us today. We're about to be dismissed, but before we do, we want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, or to join the epicenter and make it your church home. If that's you there, you need salvation, you need water baptism. We do have water available for you today. If you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, hallelujah. We will baptize you today in Jesus' name. My dear sister, why are you, are you here for? Okay, she's here for baptism. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as she has come, is there anyone else? Hallelujah. Let's rejoice with them. Let's celebrate with them. Are you here for baptism as well, my sister? And we have another one here for baptism as well. Going down in Jesus' name today. Hallelujah. Is there anyone else today? Anyone want to make the episode of that church home? If that's you today, come down front. We'll give you the right hand of fellowship today and receive you in as a member of this great body here at the Upper Series. Is there someone today? Hallelujah. 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 God bless you, my brother. You're here to join the church to be baptized. Okay, well, he's here for prayer. He, he's here to call on the elder of the church, so he wants prayer. And we will do that in just a moment. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is there someone else today? Perhaps there's someone watching online. You want to join the episode and you would like to? If so, we encourage you to text the words new here to the number 601-202-4365. So we'll get with you and receive you in as a new member of the body here at the episode of the church. Amen. Well, our dear sister's going to ask you to go with Sister Tamika. She's going to get you prepared for baptism as they get ready to baptize you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. For my dear brother, just remain here. We're going to pray with you immediately after service, me and the elder. 
well. Don't forget to join us tonight at 7 p.m. for our Sunday night power and praise worship experience. Don't forget that to join us again tonight. With all hearts and minds clear, leave you in the hands of a just God who's able to both judge both the quick and the dead. Also, don't forget if someone came in late, we do have offering bins on either side. As you go out the door, be sure to drop your offering in one of those bins as you leave today. Amen. But let us pray now. We'll be dismissed. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for who you are. And thank you, Father, for speaking to us today and show us that we can fly again and be free. And now as we leave this place, but never your presence, may you watch over us, keep us, and protect us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you.